Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining. My name is Carla Plasencia, and on behalf of the student world, I welcome you to this live session, Study English in the U.S. with ELC um, Georgetown. So thank you again, guys, so, so much for, for being here with us. I will just explain super fast how this platform works. So basically... You have the chat here in the right side, as, as you see. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much uh, for sending your hellos. Um, if you can let us know where you're watching us from, that will be awesome. So we can get to know you a little bit better. Um, so here you can, Tunisia, awesome. That is so cool. Thank you so, so much. Um, Lebanon, okay, perfect. Thank you for sharing, guys. So this is for that, for you to share your thoughts and, and so we can get to know you a little bit better. I will be sharing some stuff here. But if you have any questions throughout the presentation, um, you have a, a questions tab that is the second tab of your chat. Here you can post your questions throughout the presentation and we will have a Q&A session at the end. And finally, we will be launching some polls um, on, the third, um, on the third tab there. So all you have to do is when you see the question, click on the answer and send it. There is not right or wrong. It's just for us to get you know, to know you better. Okay, guys. So I don't want to take any more of your time. So I will present you, I'll introduce you to our awesome presenters for today. So we have Regan, Daniel, and Marisa. Um, they are joining us from Washington, D.C., and they will share with us all the amazing opportunities that they have for you. So thank you guys so much for being here and the stage is all yours. Hello everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. We're so excited to talk to you, to tell you about some of our great programs and to make sure that you know about all of the interesting, fun and incredible experiences that are available to you here at Georgetown University. So we're going to start, we're in our welcome now. We'll do some polls, as Carla said. We'll tell you all the things you want to know about life in Washington, DC, our different intensive programs that we offer, how you can apply to our programs, and how to get a visa if you are going to apply for a student visa. So let's start with some introductions. My name is Daniel Graff. I am the Program Director of Enrollment Management at Georgetown's English Language Center, which means I'm in charge of admissions and immigration advising. And I'm happy to answer any questions you have about those two topics. And now we're going to have Regan Carver introduce himself. Thank you, Daniel. My name is Regan Carver and I work, uh, I'm a program manager. I work very closely with Daniel and the rest of the staff. I focus on marketing and in addition with recruitment uh, to make sure that students have all the information they need to choose the right program. And I do a little bit of operations work as well. Um, and I'm really excited to meet all of you guys during this webinar today. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Marissa Windsor. I am the Student Services Manager here at Georgetown ELC. I'm super excited to be um, getting to talk to you guys and meet you all from uh, all around the world. It's great to be here. So at Georgetown, we have an important mission where we promote academic excellence in teaching and learning guided by our Jesuit commitment to diversity, respect, and care for the individual. This is our spirit of Georgetown, and it is our important values that helps us have a holistic education for you, the care of the whole person. So a lot of you have told us in the chat already, where are you from? If not, go ahead and tell us now. I see we have people coming from Morocco, from Libya, Tunisia. I've seen Afghanistan and Pakistan, Central African Republic. 
lot of diversity. This is so exciting to have people from so many different places. Let's see, I see uh, Kurdistan, Iraq, Lebanon, Algeria. Wonderful. Thank you all for coming from so many different places. Okay, so we're going to have our first poll now. This question is, have you visited or studied in the United States before? So go ahead, you can choose the answer that um, describes you. Yes, I've studied in the US. Yes, I've visited the US on vacation. Yes, I have visited and studied in the US. Or no, I have never visited or studied in the US. Okay, it looks like we have a lot of votes already. The largest number, it looks like, is no, I have never visited or studied in the US. We have, it looks like almost 80% of the participants here are answering that. But we do have some people who have come on vacation, some people who have studied, and some people who have done both. This is great. Studying and visiting in the US is a very fun, interesting and um, beneficial opportunity. And we're very excited to share with you your opportunity to study at Georgetown at the English Language Center. Okay, so we have another question for you in our poll. How many years have you been using English? Whether you're just starting out or you've been learning for a long time, there are opportunities to study at Georgetown. Okay, there's a lot of votes, it looks like. For most, or for a third, it looks like, 38% of students have been studying for 10 or more years. That's very impressive. So for students who've been studying for such a long time, we offer courses for students who want to get university degrees, master's degrees, or even for your professional and job-related goals. About a third of students have studied between zero to five years and about a little less than a third have studied from six to 10 years. That's great. We're happy to meet you where you are on your English journey. Okay, now I'm gonna hand the mic over to Marissa. All right, um, I'm going to get to talk to you guys a bit about student life in Washington, D.C. Um, so if you come in person uh, to attend our classes, uh, what your life would be like um, in this city. So there is a lot to explore here. Um, we do so many fun events and get to experience a lot of beautiful places. 
Um, DC is very rich in culture and history. And we uh, get to go and explore and learn together. So we are just steps away from many of DC's historical landmarks. So as you know, DC is very famous in history and throughout the world. Um, and we are close to a lot of places that DC is famous for. So places like the White House, uh, different monuments, many museums and government institutions. We get to participate in many fun events. Um, we get to go uh, to places like the Capitol building. Um, we get to see um, in our very close walking distance to the National Mall. As you can see, we also do um, some very fun uh, adventures, like on the picture, in the picture on the right, uh, we go kayaking. Um, we do many fun outdoor activities um, and get to see beautiful places in DC. Uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, is a great city. There are plenty of things to do, no matter what type of food you like, uh, what type of art or music or culture that you are interested in. There are all kinds of different opportunities, um, both to enjoy your favorites and learn about um, what you might like that you never um, knew about before. Um, so we have many restaurants, cafes, um, chances to attend uh, art and music festivals, um, and many other things. Washington, D.C. is also home to many different famous sports teams. One picture here, um, we went to see a Wizards game. Uh, where they play basketball, but we also have many opportunities to watch American football, baseball, soccer, um, and ice hockey, um, and more. Uh, so there are lots of opportunities to explore different sports. Washington, D.C. is... Um, the home of a lot of policymakers and diplomats. Um, so we are very famous for government institutions. Um, as you can see here, famous alumnus Bill Clinton. Um, as a Georgetown student, there are lots of opportunities to get to hear from some of our uh, most famous political figureheads and learn about uh, worldwide politics DC is also ranked number one for um, city parks. So here you can see a very large park in uh, DC called Rock Creek Park. Um, it has lots of places for biking um, and hiking. There are lots of opportunities to leave the city feel and experience uh, the beauty of nature. Um, as far as housing uh, for our students, so um, while you are a student here at the English Language Center, um, most students find their own off-campus housing. Uh, you can live in either Washington, D.C. Um, or close by in Virginia or in Maryland. There is some limited on-campus housing available if you come during a summer session. There is uh, some limited housing um, on our main campus called Hilltop in downtown Georgetown. Um, but then there is also housing um, on in our DC uh, downtown campus um, if you stay for the full semester. And then do note that we have a comprehensive housing guide on our website. Um, where you can read about the different D.C., Virginia, Maryland neighborhoods. Um, we are more than happy to help assist you um, finding the best housing uh, for you. And then finally, I just wanted to review some current Georgetown University health requirements. Um, 
The first is that all classes are in person. So we do not offer any online classes. Um, the COVID-19 uh, vaccination is required to be here on campus. Um, you must be fully vaccinated both with the um, first round, um, whether that is a one shot or a two shot dose. And then you must also have uh, your booster. So this is required for all students, faculty and staff um, so that we may all keep each other safe while here in person. And then finally, masks are optional. Um, you may wear them or you don't have to. Um, and then just keep in mind that um, all of our COVID requirements are constantly changing as we are assessing the um, current health situation here in Washington, DC. Okay, are there any questions specifically about student life here in DC? Okay, it looks like we're going to have some question time at the end. So go ahead and put your questions in the box and we'll get to them at the question session. So uh, it looks like a lot of you have already asked questions about our programs, our schedules, costs. We're going to go over all that now. So get ready to hear about all of our English Language Center programs. So in order to choose the program that's right for you, we have to know what are your goals? for studying English. So we have one final poll question. What are your goals for studying English? Is it to get a university degree, to improve for professional or job related reasons, or to improve for personal reasons? Please let us know in the, in the polls. Okay, it looks like 60% of the people here want to study English for professional or job related reasons. Our professional English program then might be of very good interest to you. But we have about 20% it looks like who want to pursue a university degree. So I'm happy to tell you about our intensive academic English program. And then it looks like about 16% who want to improve for personal reasons. You may be interested in our intensive language and culture program. So what are classes like at the English Language Center? Well, they're pretty small. Interactive class sizes are usually about 10 to 12 students so you have lots of time and lots of access to your professors. You'll be able to engage in topics in a variety of fields from history and culture to international relations. There's integrated language skills, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. Frequent pair and group discussion to get to know your classmates and students from all over the world. And we use Google, Canvas, and other educational technology tools to help you learn. Your professors, there's a lot of great professors here at ELC. We have educators with more than 20 years of experience in teaching and cross-cultural experience. You will have regular writing and speaking feedback on your assignments, both for homework and in class as well as opportunities for office hours for one-on-one -on -one feedback and advising from your professors. You can learn more about who our professors are on our blog. You can look us up at elc.georgetown.domains. We have eight-week program sessions for our intensive English programs. These start in January, March, May, October, and August. The three programs that we have are Intensive Language and Culture, Intensive Academic English, and Intensive Professional English. 
So these eight week sessions will start over these five times. We have, we offer language and culture and academic English in all five of these sessions. There are three levels in intensive language and culture and four levels in intensive academic English. Intensive language and culture is good for if you are pursuing English for personal goals or job related goals. And our academic English program is good if you're interested in university study, both for undergraduate and graduate degrees. So let's talk about our intensive language and culture program. You'll be able to improve your English language skills while gaining a deeper understanding of US culture and how to communicate in a variety of cultural settings. You'll be able to build confidence and vocabulary for speaking and short writing. You can learn strategies for discussion and email and virtual communication. And you'll also strengthen your foundational English language skills for academic and professional settings. To be admitted into this program, you'll have to take our placement test but there are no TOEFL or IELTS scores needed. These three levels correspond to the uh, CIFR, which is the Common European Framework A2 to B1. So by the time you finish, you can expect to have a B1 English proficiency. Now let's move on to our intensive academic English program. Here, you can develop the academic skills you need to successfully transition into academic life at a US college or university. You'll learn a lot of great academic skills, such as how to write academic summaries, essays and research papers, how to give an academic presentation, how to take notes with academic readings and lectures, how to participate in class discussions, how to critically analyze, evaluate and synthesize academic sources. And you'll also get the chance to choose an interesting elective to sharpen skills in grammar, communication, leadership and more. We've had electives recently on grammar, media, and on the news. The C4 levels for these four will start at B1 plus and go up from there. You will have to take the ELC placement test, but again, there are no TOEFL, IELTS, or other test scores required for admission. Finally, we have our intensive professional English program. This course is not offered in the summer, but it is offered in January, March, August, and October. For our professional English program, if you're interested in English for a job related skill, as about 60% of you said you are, you can refine your English skills while understanding US professional practices in business and public policy as well as the critical leadership and networking skills you need for success. You'll be able to build confidence in professional writing and communication skills, analyze case studies and organizational structures. You can practice professional skills for interviewing, negotiation, debate, and networking, as well as focus on leadership, public policy, businesses, and NGOs as just some of the many interesting topics. Our two modules are offered in the fall and spring, but not in the summer. Our admissions requirement, you must have a bachelor's degree or work experience. You'll have to take the ELC placement test and uh, place in at least the CIFR B2 plus category. But again, there are no TOEFL or IELTS scores needed for admission. So what does a day in the life at ELC look like? Well, here's a sample daily schedule for a full-time student studying 20 hours a week. In the morning, classes start at 9 and end at 11.20. You'll probably start with a reading or writing class. You'll have a nice break for lunch where you can study, go to office hours, attend many of our interesting workshops with special guests, and enjoy lunch with your friends. In the afternoon, you'll have a second class which will run from 1 to 3.20 p.m., which will probably be a speaking and listening class so that you can do all of your skills, speaking, listening, reading, and writing in one day. Once classes are over, there'll be time for independent study and social activities, like some of the great interesting events that Marissa told you about. 
We also have some shorter programs that we offer that are not our eight week long intensive programs. We have a uh, two three week short programs for summer 2023, our American Conversational English program and our English Skills for Graduate Students program. American Conversational English or ACE will be this year from July 17th to August 4th. You'll be able to have dynamic in-person lessons combined with practical field trips to major DC landmarks and venues to practice speaking in real settings. There's no homework or writing assignments and it's good for all English levels. Our other program is English Skills for Graduate Students, which will be from June 21st to July 12th. In order to participate in this program, you'll need to have current or fall admission to a graduate program in the United States. In this program, you can improve your ability to read university level texts, write short research papers, parts, and summaries, and critically analyze information from text and audio sources to evaluate and make connections. You'll be able to strengthen your skills in listening to lectures and discussions while taking effective notes, participate in classes, group discussions, and team meetings, and deliver oral presentations. It's a great way to prepare for a graduate degree in the United States. So if you have questions about our programs, let's go ahead and put them in our question section. And then once we get to the question time at the end of our presentation, we'll be happy to answer them. Hey, thank you so much, Daniel and Marissa, for starting this off. Um, I'm going to talk about intensive English admissions. Uh, so it's a relatively easy process that you'll go through. Uh, number one, you'll uh, complete the online application, which you can find by going to https link tree forward slash forward slash link tree uh, forward slash georgetown.elc.admissions. And don't worry if you don't get this uh, web address, we're going to email it out to everyone after the session. After you complete the online application, you'll take an online placement test, which is proctored using the Zoom platform. And then after that, if you need F1 visa support, you can work with one of our um, immigration advisors in order to apply to receive F1 visa support. And so uh, depending on the different programs that you're applying for, uh, for example, there's different pre prerequisites. For example, if you have a high school degree or it's equivalent, you would qualify for American Conversational English, Intensive Language and Culture, or Intensive Academic English. If you have a bachelor's degree or work experience or a bachelor's degree plus work experience, you would qualify for Intensive Professional English. And if you have been accepted to a graduate program in the United States, or if you're a continuing graduate student in the United States, you would qualify for English skills for graduate students as my colleague Daniel just mentioned. And of course, if you have any questions about this, be prepared to put them in the, uh, in the questions box to be answered later. And just like I said in the last slide, you would create your account on the application portal website number one. And then as far as uh, completing your uh, online application, um, after you can create an account on the application portal website, number two, you would fill in biographical information in the portal. It's very uh, simple to do so. The only really important thing is that you do so in English. Now, number three, and this is very important that you attach proof of high school completion, post-secondary studies, 
and or graduate admissions from your, again, high school, bachelor's degree, or, or a graduate program. And uh, you would have to have your high school undergraduate or graduate program uh, translate this information if it's, if it's not already in English. And then number four, sometimes people get confused about this and they leave their application 99% finished, but you need to review your entire application on the portal and then pay a $75 application fee and click submit. And remember, if you have any questions as you're going through the application, you can always email guelc at georgetown.edu. And it's, we're always here to help you out with your application. And I'm just gonna write this into guelc at georgetown. Uh, edu if you have any questions with your application um, and then after you finish your application um, you take a placement test and then uh, the placement test the different programs that you're able to place into it depends on like for for example, you might want to take academic, but you have to have at least a B1 or greater, and maybe you you have a lower score, so you would have to start with language and culture, which requires a CEFR level of A2 to B1. Academic again is uh, B1, which is uh, intermediate. Language and culture, you can start with a with a higher basic level, and then professional, you have to be in a high intermediate level. And so, thinking about the placement test, um, it's required after the application has been completed. It's aligned with CEFR, and if you haven't heard of CEFR, it's the Common European Framework, which aligns all of our programs with um, the, the level of instruction at which they're taught at um, and with listening, reading, vocabulary, and grammar and being the different facets of the ESL, ELC placement test. And in the um, placement test, there's a timed writing sample and there's also an oral interview, uh, which another of our colleagues, uh, proctors, um, Professor Gallup. One thing for you to know so that you don't get nervous about this, you don't have to submit a TOEFL or an IELTS when you apply to the English Language Center. Instead, we have our own test, which we proctor over Zoom. I'm sure everybody has heard of Zoom. And um, and again, TOEFL and IELTS are not required for admission or used instead of placement, but they can be submitted to help your application process. Um, and then in addition, if you're um, thinking about what the tuition is, after you've been accepted into the program, assuming that you uh, pass the placement test. Um, we're currently um, recruiting for spring two, which would be if you need visa sponsorship, you can apply for uh, March 13th to May 5th for spring two sessions. And you, the deadline is no, is December 1st, if you, Daniel, can you help me with the, the deadline for- uh, Yes, spring? everyone, if you are applying to the spring one session and you need visa support, 
Unfortunately, the deadline has already passed. It was November 4th. But if you do not require visa support, you can still apply for the spring one session. The deadline is December 1st. For okay. the spring two session, if you need visa support, please apply by January 13th. But if you don't need visa support, you can apply as late as February 2nd. Excellent. So, and then a lot of people have questions about, well, how much does it cost to come and study at the ELC? Um, the tuition that everyone has to pay for eight week sessions for language and culture, academic and professional is $4,760 for the tuition for each eight week session. There's also estimated living and personal expenses, which have, uh, are $5,200, um, which you have to pay or you have to substantiate that you have this amount of money when you're especially, well, particularly if you're an F1 student um, and then there's insurance book and books, academic books and fee costs of $300. Now, we estimate that it's going to be around $5,000 that it'll cost to spend a, a session uh, studying in, in Washington, D.C. However, you don't have to actually pay that amount of money to stay and study for one session. It's just the amount of money that you have to demonstrate when you're um, submitting your financial information in order to get an I-20, which Daniel will talk about in the next session of the next section of this presentation. Um, so the total support needed for the I-20, again, which will be discussed in the next section is $10,260. And then if you decide that you want to apply to study in the summer of 2023, which would be starting in May 22nd and ending in July 14th and and it's open to be able to uh, apply for that. The deadline, if uh, you need an F-1 visa, would be March 24th. And the deadline, if you don't need F-1 support, is April 15th. And then the, uh, the tuition and fees are the same as they were for spring two. And I know a lot of people will have uh, questions about this. Uh, what the different fees mean and, and stuff. And we're going to spend as much time as we need to answer your questions. Regarding the English skills for graduate students, the three-week course that we mentioned that you have to be either an incoming uh, accepted graduate student for a U.S. program or a continuing graduate student. Um, the program goes from June 21st to July 12th with an application deadline of May 10th. The tuition is $1,999 with estimated living and personal expenses of $2,500 and insurance books and fees of $200. And so if you need F1 student visa sponsorship, it would be a total of $4,699. And then for the three-week American Conversational English program, it meets from July 17th to August 4th with an application deadline of June 1st. And the tuition is $1,000. $989 with an estimated living and personal expenses of $2,500 and insurance books and fees of $200 with total support needed for I for the I-20 of, of uh, $4,689 for 
for students that need F1 student visa sponsorship. And remember, if you don't need uh, visa sponsorship, you don't need to demonstrate the $2,500. And Daniel, would you like to take a moment to just talk about the what the I-20 means and what the F-1 visa means? Yes, that's the next section. Great. Okay, so let's talk about the immigration process. If you are applying for an F-1 visa, the first step will be to complete your ELC application and your placement testing, as we've described. Once that's done, you'll be invited to apply for your I-20. You'll receive an invitation in your email to our student portal, and you'll upload your required documents for your Form I-20. These will include your passport, personal information like your address, and your financial documents demonstrating that you have the money necessary for the program. Once you have completed your application, you'll receive your Form I-20 by email. You can then print this out and use it to apply an interview for an F-1 visa at a U.S. embassy or consulate in your country. And then finally, once you have your F-1 visa and your I-20, you can enter the United States. We recommend that you apply as early as possible for F-1 visa support as your I-20 may take some time to process. Another reason we recommend applying early is that wait times for visa interviews will vary by your country. If you want to look up your local embassy or consulate and how long the visa wait times are, please go ahead and look them up at this website here, bit.ly slash visa wait times, run by our US Department of State. Okay, now onto our final topic today, which is part-time study. If you do not need F1 visa support, if you're here on a different visa, then you can take part-time classes at ELC. You can take part-time classes in our language and culture program, our intensive academic English, and our professional programs. Our usual full-time classes are 20 hours a week. A part-time class would be 10 hours a week, plus daily homework and independent study. You could choose to come in the mornings, such as from 9 to 11.20 for a reading and work, uh, writing class. Or you could come in the afternoon from 1 to 3.20 for a listening and speaking class. If you attend part-time, you're also welcome to attend office hours, workshops, independent study, and our many interesting social activities and events. Okay, the last thing that we want to tell you today before we go to your questions is you can contact us in a lot of different ways. If you're interested in calling us, please use this number here, 1202-687-5978. You can email us. Regan helpfully put that in our chat, so go ahead and email guelc at georgetown.edu if you have questions. You can also look up our website elc.georgetown.edu, which has a lot of great information about our programs, the application process, and many answers to your questions. And then, of course, our link tree at georgetown.elc. Finally, you can tune into our Instagram at georgetown.elc to see lots of fun videos that Marissa and our student services assistant have made showcasing the many great activities and events available at Georgetown. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much for sharing all this information. We do have a lot of questions. Some of them you already answered uh, during the presentation. So, guys, if you have any doubts, please um, add them now to the questions tab. And 
But I see here a question about accommodation. If we can dig a little bit more um, into how accommodation for a student works, if you have any um, accommodation inside of the institution, of if they have to look for it outside, how does that work? Great, so um, accommodation uh, for housing and such. Um, like I said, most students do find this on their own um, locally in downtown DC um, or in Northern Virginia um, off of um, a metro, uh, which is how you could get to class on the train um, or also in Maryland. Um, they tend to be cheaper options. Um, and then we do have accommodations um, w through Georgetown. Um, if you stay for summer, there is uh, opportunity to stay at um, our main campus called Hilltop in Georgetown. And then um, if you come for a whole semester, um, so if you stay for two um, sessions, uh, like say spring one and spring two, uh, you have the opportunity to apply to stay um, at our downtown DC location um, campus. Uh, that is not far from where our building is um, at the ELC. So does that answer the question mostly? Let me also add, we have a comprehensive housing guide on our website with lots of great information about housing options, apartments, and neighborhoods in the DC area. Absolutely. Yeah, let me try to find that link. Perfect, thank you, Regan. That will be super helpful. Um, here I have some students asking about if they need, um, if they can go to with a tourist visa to the part-time courses or if they need to, um, to get another type of visa for those. That's a good question. So the United States defines a tourist visa as someone who is here for recreation and enjoyment, which precludes the option of full-time study. So you cannot study full-time on a tourist visa. So the question was about part-time study. If you're on a part-time visa, uh, excuse me, if you're on a tourist visa, you are allowed to take part-time classes for recreation and enjoyment, which would qualify for uh, 10 hours of study at our university. So yes, um, just make sure that you look up our regulations to make sure if you combine our course with other courses, for example, you might be in danger of violating the terms of your visa. So it's very important to do your research about this. But generally, um, if you're a part time student, there are some options to study on a tourist visa. Awesome. Thank you so much, Daniel. Um... Here I have some questions about if you have any programs for teachers. We do. There's actually a program called Teaching English as a Foreign Language Certificate. And I don't know. Let me find the link to that too. Thank you, Regan. Thank you so, so much. I don't know where to, can I put it in the chat or the questions? Yeah. yeah, and the chat will be perfect. So all the students can see that and click on it and it will pop in another window. I have here some questions um, about the payments. So how should they pay? Should they pay the whole program at the very beginning, before, um, is it like divided? How does that work? Good question. So as part of the application process, students are asked to pay a $200 tuition deposit. You'll have to pay this $200 deposit in order to apply for your I-20. Um, but the rest of the tuition is not uh, does not have to be paid until you're actually here in the United States in your first week of the program. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. 
Um, here is another question that some of the of the students, the countries they live in, they have um, a difficult um, visa process. So they are asking if you um, assist them in the visa process and how can they contact um, you on that side? Yeah, so we offer advice and um, advising for students and their applications. Uh, once you start your process, you'll be able to communicate with our immigration advisor through our immigration email. And um, we can give you advice about applying in your country, applying times. Also, if you're interested in applying to uh, a visa in neighboring countries, that's also a possibility. And we can help you walk through this process of how to research which neighboring countries will allow you to apply as a third country national. So don't worry, there's support throughout this process. Awesome, thank you so much. Here I have some questions about if you offer any kind of online courses. No. Okay. No, unfortunately. Thank you. Um, here a student is asking again, okay, so I, I, I understood the question better. Okay, so if they have a place to stay, like with family or friends there, can they do that? And if so, um, would that help with the income proof that they have to show? So of course, you if you have family or friends here in the United States, you can stay with them. The $5,200, that's just an estimate. So you don't have okay. to spend that money. You can live with roommates. You can live with friends. You can live in share houses, homestays. You can even spend more than that if you want to have different accommodations and live by yourself in different areas. However, if you need the F-1 visa support, you do have to demonstrate $10,200 per eight-week session that you're going to apply to. And this can be done through a variety of financial resources from yourself, from your family, from a government sponsor, a cultural sponsor, different accounts, and we'll work with you to make sure that you have all your documents done. Awesome. Thank you so much, Daniel. Um, let me go through the questions here. Uh, the visa. Okay, the deadlines. Can you go again, like briefly through the deadlines again, please? Yeah. Can we show that part of the PowerPoint? Sure. We can it like this oh. if you need visa support for spring one i'm sorry it's too late but if you don't need visa support then you can apply by december 1st this week that is our january to march session for spring two which is from march to may our deadline for visa support is January 13th and February 2nd if you don't need visa support. For the summer, which will be from May to July, your deadline if you need visa support is March 24th and April 15th if you don't need visa support. Those are in our intensive English programs. We also have our three-week sessions. For English Skills for Graduate Students, which is from June 21st to July 12th, the deadline to apply is May 10th. And finally, for our second three-week program, American Conversational English, which will be in the summer from July 17th to August 4th, the deadline to apply is June 1st. Awesome. Thank you so, so much for that, Daniel. Um... Here I see questions about the applying process. So do they need any English proficiency test to, to, um, to get into the courses or is not necessary? It, it is necessary because they have to, they have to reach a, a minimal level for each of the different um, 
programs, as I was explaining during the presentation. So for example, if they wanted to get into, I don't know, it might be good to show the slide that sure. if you go backwards. Yeah, go forwards. Yeah, that one. So for example, if somebody wanted to study in the academic level, they'd have to at least be between B1 and B2, basically intermediate plus. So, but in order to qualify for our programs, they need to be at least A2, but that's okay. also predicated on which uh, programs that we're offering in any given semester. Um, so I may add, all students will take Georgetown's English proficiency test. Okay. This will be done by Zoom, and you'll be able to sign up soon after you submit your application. Right. It's a pretty quick process. We can finish it in just an hour or so. Um, and all students will do this so that we can place you in the right level for you. You do not have to take any outside English test. There's no yes. TOEFL, no IELTS, no other requirements. Perfect. Thank you so, so much. Um, that This is a question for me if we are recording this. So, yes, we are recording this. And... We will share it with you guys after the session and it will also you you will be also able to see it on the Student World YouTube channel. So you can watch it again and you can share it um, with your friends or somebody that you think that that will benefit from this information. So I see I saw here. Another question. Okay, this is a, a very good question. Um, can you tell them more about where is um, Georgetown University located? What is there for the students? Like all the student life that I know that we cover at the beginning, but just very briefly for the students that were not here in the first few minutes of the session. Great, yeah, uh, Georgetown um, is located in DC, uh, which is the nation's capital here in the US. Um, it is a great city that is full of a lot of different types of history. Um, many times when you think of um, DC, you might think of the White House or the Washington Monument or museums or the National Mall. And Georgetown, um, our campus uh, at the English Language Center is in uh, right in the heart of DC. And so we are very close to a lot of those um, monuments and uh, centers. And so there's a lot of uh, diversity in culture and interests such as music and art and film um, and all different types um, of things for people. So um, we offer a variety of events and festivals and experiences um, in addition to um, a lot of opportunities um, to learn about history um, and nature and experience um, a lot of typical American culture um, and learn a lot of things. Awesome. Thank you so much, Marisa. And yes, Washington, D.C. is very beautiful and it's full of museums and things to do. So you will never be bored. There is always something um, to do, somewhere to go to. So it is amazing. Um, I see here some questions again about the application process. So maybe we can go back to that slide and just briefly um, go through that again. Sure. Awesome. Thank you, Regan.
Perfect, guys. So here you have the application process. Um, you can take a screenshot of it, and I also share that link on the chat twice. So you can have access to that and you can click on that and it will open in another window and you can check that out after the presentation. So awesome. Okay, perfect. I see here some questions about the visa duration. So they want to know if the visa is exactly for the time of their studies or if they have like some weeks after that to maybe travel around or how does that work yes so the length of your visa will depend on your home country so we have uh, the united states has agreements with every country about visa length some of them are usually five years they can be longer they can also be shorter you can look this up on your local embassy website about the lengths of student visas that they offer. However, for all programs, once you finish your studies here, you can have 60 days, a 60 day grace period in which to travel or do business in the United States. So for business or pleasure. And we do recommend using these 60 days to travel and have fun and explore the United States. Awesome. This is great. This is great. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Okay. So I guess um, we already answered the questions that I see here. So what I will do is go to the contact information slide again. So you guys can take a screenshot of that. And I will also share the same information here in the chat. So you can save it on your devices and you can contact um, Georgetown ELC. Um, if I can add here, I, I always say that I had the opportunity to visit at the Georgetown campus um, uh, a year ago and it is amazing and the city is so, so beautiful, guys. So if you take this opportunity, I'm super sure that you will not regret it. It is a great place to be and as I always say, there is no place to learn English like the lo with the locals, you know, like you have to practice all the time. And if learning English in your countries is not that fun and it's a little bit harder because you have no real world um, interaction when you travel and when you're forced to use it, it is so much easier. And I'm sure that you will be... Um, um, super successful here in this courses. So I just shared the information here. I, I am sharing this also on the screen so you can take the screenshot. And okay, so um, I will just ask our presenters if you have any last thoughts that you want to share with the students. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're really looking forward to seeing your applications and to seeing you at Georgetown in Washington, D.C. soon. And if you have any questions, don't uh, hesitate to reach out to us on WhatsApp via telephone or via email. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you um, to the presenters. Thank you, Regan, Daniel, and Marisa for being here, for sharing with the students all this information and answering all our questions. And thank you um, to the students for being here, for sharing a little bit of your afternoons. Thank you for making the time, guys. We appreciate it very, very much. So again, you can watch uh, again this, this live session if you want to go through any of the information or if you want to show it to your parents or to friends. Um, it will be on the Student World YouTube channel and I will send you an email so you can see the recording. So thank you again and I'll see you next time and hopefully in DC. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful evening, afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. Bye-bye. Ciao.